My name's Steve Baker and I'm the MP for Wickham. And throughout the time I've been the uh, representative for our area, Red Kite Community Housing has been a defining feature. As you can see, it's an award-winning organisation providing social housing for our community. But they're moving on to a new phase in their story to provide more shared ownership and more market rents in order to, partly in order to fund more social housing. So I'm here today to meet Alan Kears, the Deputy Chief Executive, and find out more about what's going on. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Welcome. So Alan, you've had an amazing journey as Red Kite. Would you like to just tell me a little bit about what your next evolution is going to be in this story? Well, our next five years are very exciting. We're mapping out our future and trying to deliver homes for the community with three new companies. 2011, which we'll talk about, which delivers flexible rents. Uh, a new personalised way of, of housing. Uh, Eden Mead, our sales company for uh, buying homes in the community in Penvale, which is our new commercial holding company. So it's 2011, Eden, Eden Mead Correct. and Penvale. That's right. Okay, well I look forward to learning more. So Alan, one of the things I've seen time and again as MP for Wickham is people desperate to buy a home locally at a price that they can afford. Is there something you're doing which will help them? Yes, there is. One of our new companies called Eden Mead, it has been set up specifically to offer sales product homes to the local community. The benefit of us doing them is that we can try and make them as truly affordable as possible and any profits that we derive from doing that will be used to cross-subsidise rented or subsidised housing, social housing. So there's a real benefit in, and a win-win for those people in the community that can't afford to buy their own home at the moment. We can offer them a competitive product which will hopefully drive the market locally um, and the benefit long term is that we can then use any of the um, surplus that we make from that in providing other new types of tenure um, across the, the district for our other companies. So that's new build homes sold on the open market to private owners cross subsidising social housing. So what's Penvale going to do and how does it fit in? Well because we, we, we know in the area that there, there are difficulties with uh, quality landlords, we know that affordability is an issue so what we're aiming to do is bring private landlords um, in under one umbrella where that we maintain the quality standards and that people have got a, an agent they can go to that they can trust that we're in it for not for profit but we're in it to provide quality accommodation for local communities. So wow this is quite something, so you're aiming to provide competitive, not only to serve people better but in doing so you're going to be putting competitive pressure on other lettings agencies? Absolutely, we're, we're aiming to be a player in the local market. You may have already seen our signs going up, warning of our imminent arrival. Um, we've taken the team that looks after our own empty properties and brings them back into, um, into play and we're looking to apply that now in a commercial setting where uh, a wider um, element of the community can benefit from uh, the approach of our staff and, and our expertise. But that's private rented, right? Private rented, that's right. So you're entering into private rented in order to make sure that there's a better letting agency available for both tenants and landlords? Yes, a uh, better approach and for, land, uh, for the private landlords as well, that they've got an avenue to go and, and know that there's somebody that's uh, experts that are managing their stock, looking after them properly, making sure that, that we're attracting the right customers to their, their homes as well. Uh, it's another alternative. We, we've moved away from just the social housing being the only option we provide. We're looking at providing a, a, a community benefit of options for a whole range of income levels around uh, the district. So this must fit into a much larger plan of delivering benefit. I think that's 2011, isn't it? It is. 2011 is, is really the really exciting venture moving forward. We've looked at how can we tackle the affordability crisis and we know the particular difficulties we've got in the Wickham district. Um, and we've, we've looked to say, well, what, do, what does it mean for individuals? Rather than just having a formulaic rent that's set by the government, we've now used the deregulation measures in the New Housing and Planning Act that the government brought about last year. And 2011 now will deliver completely personalised rent, so they'll be affordable and flexible to the individual household concerned. What that really means is that we can link it directly to the welfare system so that we're able to encourage and motivate people to realise their potential um, and get into work and improve their prospects if they are in work uh, and our rent system will work in a complementary fashion alongside welfare um, benefits so that people get more of the money the more they work, um, they, they see an instant benefit as soon as they go back into work um, and in, in the long term we hope that will have a positive effect on the benefit built for the country because people will move away from welfare dependency. 
So we see it's a win-win for everybody really um, and we know that when people um, are free of dependency on support and benefits that they have proper life choices of where they live, what they do, where they work. Um, in order to get there they need some help and support and that's why 2011 has been set up not just to deliver personalised rents but also to release the potential of each household and we're doing that through our community potential specialists which is effectively like a support, guidance, training, life coaching almost where we bring together all of the network partners in the area and signpost and help people develop personal plans that will deliver um, prosperity for their families. So Alan, just reflecting on what you've told me, I'm thinking what's not to like and I'm struggling but the one thing that comes to mind is doing MPs casework now for eight years is antisocial behaviour which is very often brought to our attention. What can you do about antisocial behaviour? Well it's something that we hear um, an awful lot about as well when we talk to our customers and it's in fact probably one of their prime concerns. The benefit of 2011 as a new company is we'll be able to deal with ASB far more effectively than we could have done before. One of the tools that we aim to use is a new tenancy sustainment licence and that works in effect similar to a driving licence. For those people that are great citizens, that pay their rent, that help out in the community, that may serve on local charity boards, they'll accrue positive points which means that they'll get a greater range of options for themselves in the future. For those that um, perhaps are not as good in the community or will often exhibit bad behaviour, we'll be able to deal with that far more quickly and far more effectively and they will attract negative points. And negative points will effectively nullify the chance of them being able to auto renew their tenancy in the future or may end their tenancy early. Are you going to change um, what constitutes antisocial behaviour? Uh, we won't be deciding that. Our customers are deciding this at all levels. So the last three months our task and finish groups have been engaging with our customers and they've been developing policies and frameworks around how this will work in the future. So the people that are actually deciding what constitutes antisocial behaviour and the level of negativity or points that that attracts is by people that are living in our homes and on our estates, not by us. So how many sites are you developing and where, when's it all happening? Well, we, we've got a, a, de a development pipeline at the moment that could um, could be approximately 40 sites, depending on planning permissions, etc. And uh, that should easily accommodate our ambitions to build 375 to 500 homes. I think we're already heading towards the 500 in, in terms of our, uh, our design feasibilities and where we are at the moment. Um, of course, the biggest one's Castlefield. Uh, that will deliver on its own around 189 new homes. We're really hopeful that that, that uh, receives support. Um, certainly, the local community are behind it. The designs are really exciting, very innovative, and the landscape and redesign of the whole area is something we've paid careful attention to. It's a complete regeneration scheme, um, and if successful, it will be almost an urban village. Um, and we've got some really exciting plans on how we attempt to overlay the recommendations of the Inclusive Growth Commission um, onto the development of that site. So we're looking at the prosperity of people moving into the site so it won't just be handing over new homes, it will be a complete package of working with local schools, health authority etc um, and really trying to integrate people into a new community that's cohesive and um, that works together where um, people f are able to work locally. We're, we're working with the Cressex Business Park and other local partners to try and provide a workforce workforce on the doorstep um, for local companies. So it's a really exciting proposition and something that's going to take an awful lot of effort from partners. So Alan, you've got uh, Eden Mead selling new homes, you've got Penvale doing the lettings, you've got 2011 doing those flexible tenancies. What does all of this mean for existing Red Kite tenants? Well that's the beauty of this, is that our existing tenants um, continue with their existing rights um, and existing benefits within the organisation. Um, none of this detracts away from any investment in Red Kite Homes. Um, there are opportunities for, from, uh, in, in terms of Penvale for our, for our customers, but 2011 is a separate entity, so it will mirror, it will be a sister organisation for Red Kite, um, but it won't impact at all on Red Kite, and that's something that the Red Kite Group Board have been absolutely adamant about that our customers still receive the, the same service, the same level of influence that, that um, they always have done and in line with the reasons why we set up in the first place. So there's absolutely nothing to fear for Red Kite tenants. Their rights don't change. They're still, uh, it's still a tenant-led organisation. They're still, in a sense, uh, guiding where it goes. 
Absolutely. We were set up as a community membership organisation and we will remain a community membership organisation. And in order to make sure that our customers felt this was the right thing to do, we've also undertaken a range of consultation events with our customers and particularly our members. And our members have voted on our proposals and have overwhelmingly supported them. Well, Alan, it sounds like an amazing set of projects. I'm really excited to see um, how it works out. And I really want to say thank you very much indeed for having me along today to learn more about what you're doing. And I really wish you every success. Thank you. Well, this has been an incredibly encouraging visit. Uh, Red Kite, as I've said at the beginning, has been um, a fixture of my time representing Wickham, and I'm just so excited to see Red Kite reinventing itself as 2011 to make sure that people are better served, to be getting involved with Eden Mead, delivering new homes, and also to be providing that uh, ethical lettings agency. So I'm incredibly excited to see how it develops, to see areas of High Wickham being regenerated and to see a fantastic tenant-led organisation right here in High Wycombe setting a pattern which I think other organisations across the country will be able to follow. So it's great news and uh, I wish them every success.